Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a seashell themed card using some of the newest products from the Honey Bee Stamps release. I did a release and review video on this a few days ago, roughly. I'll link to it at the end of this one if you missed it. So I'm using the Lovely Layers Seashore Wafer Die Set. And I die cut all the pieces using um, Hammer Mill cardstock. I'm really liking this cardstock for layering dies like this because it's lighter weight so it doesn't add as much bulk and the hammer mill cardstock takes ink really nicely. It foils great too. It's been really popular the last however long and I happen to have tons of it so that's what I've been using. So I die cut all the pieces and I'm doing really simple ink blending to add the color to these. You can do anything like literally whatever floats your boat you know copic markers regular markers inks sprays die cut it from just color cardstock all the things but i want to do ink blending because i've been really enjoying ink blending on all of my like wafer die cuts just giving it that extra something so for the inks for the first seashell here i'm using um what did i use i just have to have okay melon ink it's just a light sort of peachy color and then I do add a bit of cantaloupe, which is a shade darker. And these are Simon's Positively Saturated inks. And I will have links to everything I used. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to it all, etc. Like always, in the description box below, as well as on my blog. And then for the inner portion of the shell, I used a Cheeky, which is a lighter pink. And then I went in with a bit of blush, just a little bit deeper. Everything looks like a hot mess, but it'll look fabulous once everything's layered together. So that was shell number one. And just like all of Honeybee's lovely layers, these come together, especially these ones, because it's just really, really obvious what goes where. But pretty much all of their lovely layers die sets, honestly, they assemble so easily. I've done a bunch of videos using them. Um, so yeah, the second shell I used Cheeky Ink again. And I purposely didn't... Um, I just, you know, I blended the ink, but I left some areas like the the impressions that the dye gave, like the embossed impressions, the lines and detail of the shell um, didn't take the ink. They will if you go, you know, over it, swirl your brush, etc. But I left it. I kind of liked how those areas were a little bit um, lighter. It just gave more texture, definition, etc. And then for the final shell... I'm using Morning, which is just a really soft blue. And then I'll go in with Twilight and add just that little bit of darker shading. Some of the areas I'm not adding any ink to because it's not going to matter. You know, the other layers are going to get layered right on top of it. And I'm just using my small little blending brushes and I'm just working on scrap paper because it's convenient. And I just, I have a pile of scrap paper that I use for any more messy-ish sort of techniques. So I did all my blending and then I went in with that darker shade, added that bit of twilight. And again, it just gives it that little extra something. And then if you really wanted to, you could go in again with like some markers, um, pencil, like color pencils, etc. And really add, you know, detail, get really realistic if you wanted to. Or you could do sprays, like the sky's the limit. That's, again, why I love these Swiffer dies. So then for the uh, Dune Grass die cut, I just took a larger blending brush because it was faster <laughs> and used uh, Latte Ink first. So covered all of these pieces and I die cut multiples of these because I wanted to use a couple on each card. So quickly went over them with the Latte Ink, which is just, you know, a nice light sort of brownie beige kind of a color. And then I'll go back in with the smaller blending brush and some cappuccino ink. So just a shade darker. So that'll just give it that little extra bit of depth that I love. And that's why I love the ink blending. So finished all of that with all of these pieces. Didn't take very long. Once everything was blended, then I'm going to adhere all the layers together just using craft tacky glue. And like I said, these come together super super simple there's like little emboss lines on 
each of the die cuts that get just impressed when you die cut the cardstock and everything just fits in together lines up together it's it, it is what I say a lot <laughs> and it's the truth I like these sorts of things that I don't really have to think too hard you know and it, it already creates its own fabulousness and I'm just like following the steps you know fitting it together super super easy so layered up all of these shells once everything was layered off camera I die cut or ran some just white cardstock through my machine with the waves pierced a2 cover plate so this doesn't die cut anything it just pierces the detail and love love so ran two pieces of white cardstock through my machine with that and then I put them in my splat box and I'm using speckled egg distress oxide spray put my flower sock cloth out because I have a tendency to get spray everywhere generally don't care but if I you know think ahead <laughs> and then I'm spraying both of these backgrounds with that oxide spray so started with kind of more concentrated toward the one co corner and then I just pressed the nozzle like roughly halfway to create more of a splatter than a spray so added a bit of splatter and then I'll set that aside let that completely dry I'm going to trim I trim that down um, to smaller than an A2 card front and then I'm also going to use some of my pattern paper I've been hoarding honeybee paper for pretty much since honeybee started releasing paper but anyway I pulled out a couple of papers from the vitamin c pack trim those down to a2 size so four and a quarter by five and a half those will be my card fronts and then I pulled sentiments from the seashells stamp set so pulled out a couple sentiments I wasn't sure what ink I was going to use but I pulled out a couple of versifying clear inks I have all of them but so swipe them onto just the scrap of white cardstock to see which one and I ended up choosing the fallen leaves ink so it's a nice deep brown and then I pulled out just scraps of white cardstock I save all these scraps I've mentioned this in previous videos when I'm trimming down like odd sized card fronts you know mini slimline cards slimline cards etc I save all those pieces of cardstock they come in so handy especially with like white cardstock strips like this because I stamp sentiments on them so I'd stamp the sentiments and then I'm going to die cut them with the coordinating wafer dies and then on the insides of the cards I'm going to stamp some of the seashells from that same stamp set with the lightest color of inks but I'm also stamping off first so I inked up the stamp with cheeky ink stamped it off first on the scrap paper and then stamped it the second time on the inside of the card just so I get that second generation stamping a lighter impression and it's not as busy on the inside of the card although honestly either one looks nice I did the same thing with the other shell in the morning ink and then I'll use the melon ink as my last little bit and yeah I didn't realize I'm like practically off screen I'm really bad for that and yes people have given me advice about like marking off areas of painter's tape and all the different things it doesn't work for me the painter's tape annoys me so anywho <laughs> I just need to pay more attention when I'm filming so I stamped the inside of the card um, I die cut the coordinating sentiments and then I'm going to use my wax melts. That's another thing I've been hoarding pretty much since Honeybee came out with these. I will link to another video I did, um, that I used one of the wax melts and I actually did it like directly on the card. Doing it this way, this is a way you can, you know, create your little wax melts and not have to worry about possibly messing up your card because you can create them separately. I'm also this time using my heat tool versus I do have a little special holder that a friend gave to me that you can put the spoon in and use a tea light and melt your wax that way like the traditional old-fashioned way that works great this is another option is to use your heat tool so I have my little wax melting spoon I have my heat tool this one is great because it's got the stand so it you know faces straight up you can just hold your heat tool you can also aim your heat tool directly at the wax just again be careful because heat all the things but melted my little wax melts in the spoon using my heat tool and then I'm just pouring this onto my uh one of my non-stick craft mats a little silicone mat would work as well possibly something like even wax paper but poured it onto there and then pressed the seashell wax stamper into it my spoon is still got wax in it this is also where my little like uh positively everything tool comes in handy anything again that's like heat resistant to set things on because the spoon portion the metal portion do not touch it it gets super super hot 
So I have it sitting there and I actually cut some of these wax melts in half because I didn't need very much. And yeah, this is so much fun. <laughs> so I did it a second time because I'm making two cards. So I've turned on my heat tool. I've put some more little wax melts in there. And I'm using wax melts from both. There's the Marvelous Moments and the Vitamin C were the newest release. So I used a couple colors from each and melted them, poured them onto my nonstick craft mat, pressed the seashell wax stamper into that, let it sit for, it doesn't take very long for the wax to cool, like 20 seconds. I don't even know. I don't time it. It's, it doesn't take long at all. And then I peel off the wax stamper and I've got these fabulous little wax seals. So you can do them this way and then adhere them to your projects. Works great. You can seal your envelopes with this, like seal your envelope and then pour the wax, seal it with the wax stamper to create an impression. That works great. The only thing you need to note is when you do that, you most likely will have to add extra postage um, because it'll make it, you know, the envelope thicker, but it does kind of go through the mail because people ask me about this. I've had many people over the years send me cards that they've used wax seals on and that's what got me into just the obsession of it because I can't even describe how fun it is you know one you get a card in the mail that's handmade but also that has the wax seal on it it's like oh this is so fancy <laughs> so they do work for that but it's also nice to be able to do them separately and then add them to your creations so like I said I will have links to all the things and I will link to the other video where I used uh it was the rose one that honeybee released some time ago so anywho i have everything ready so now it's time to start assembling so i adhered my dune grass to the background that i would used the waves pierced a2 cover plate on and then i wrapped some may arts ivory twine around that and tied it in a bow just add that a little extra something and then i backed these panels with simon's big mama foam tape so just a great way to adhere it but also give a little bit of dimension not too much and i had already adhered the pattern paper to the card base just with craft tacky glue and then i popped on those backgrounds and then the seashells i'm adhering with either the foam tape or i'm just adhering directly to the background with the craft tacky glue i purposely left that bottom right corner kind of open because that's where the wax seal is going to go so got all those adhered then i'm going to add splatter more splatter of course <laughs> using my gonzai tombi starry colors palette so i'm going to add some gold splatter to these because they just they needed it they needed it plus i'm going to add more gold this there was a reason behind using gold this time so splattered that with my fan brush once I got that all splattered and I'm going to let the splatter dry, I made a point of making sure to add it to the shells. Again, again there's some seashells and gold and like the twine and then the wax. See, like there's a lot of texture going on and I, I love it. So after I got all that splatter on there, let those dry. The sentiments I popped on with um, more foam tape and a little bit of craft tacky glue. So after I die cut them, added the foam tape, added the craft tacky glue, stuck those into place. And then the wax seals, those I'm also going to adhere with the Big Mama foam tape because there's a lot of texture with all those little die cuts kind of in that spot. Plus this foam tape like adheres so well. So adhered, just stuck the foam tape like right in place there, peeled off the backing, pressed in the seal. You could leave it like this, like it looks fine. On camera, it looks a little funny because you know my lights kind of wash out everything however I pulled out one of my metallic paint markers this is a spectrum noir it comes in a set of three with three different size tips this is just the chisel tip and this is the gold one so I've got this metallic paint marker and I'm just running it over the raised shell on this wax seal so it gives it that gold finish love <laughs> Uh, I need to use wax seals more often in my videos. This was a lot of fun. So once that was done and it takes like literally a second or two to dry, these cards are complete. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I mentioned earlier, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I will have uh, picture links in the blog post, a supply list, all that info will be in the description box directly below the video. You just got to expand it 
everything is there for you guys. You can find it all. So you can check that out below if you're interested. And then I'll have links to the other video I mentioned and whatnot at the very end of this video during the end screen. So you can check that out as well. Thank you all so much for watching, for thumbs upping, commenting. I very ap much appreciate the engagement. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.